Hello. God's love and light. Hey, how you doing today, man? <laughs> what you doing on here? Y'all not at work? Look me being messy. Y'all not at work? Since I retired. <laughs> That's on my fun, A.T. That is so funny. <laughs> Thank you, babe. I appreciate you. Y'all, if y'all at work, give me the little emoji with, with the with the finger. <laughs> with the finger on the mouth so you can't talk to me when in that conference room. If you in that cube connect to somebody. Look, I'm just being messy. Since I went on early retirement, I just wanted to come on and just chat with y'all a little early. See who was on here. Hello, hello. Hello, Rhonda. I'm lying in bed, being passionate about my abundance. I know that's right. How do you, um, how do you practice your uh, manifestations? You, you do the living in the end? How do you do it? Everybody have a different method and you know, everybody have to find what works best for them. For me, living in the end, I found that to be the best. You know, the people, people say, you know, you gotta be present in the now, so to speak, but I'm broke. <laughs> you done made your own law, that's funny. Well, yeah, that that's worked for me on my journey. You know, I started off listening to Abraham Hicks, Esther, if you know her by that name. And she really left an impact on my life. And so I got to be honest, in the beginning, when I first listened to her, it felt a little weird. It felt a little weird listening to her from her experiences, you know, coming out of religion. But it was something about it that, that also resonated. So I kept on listening, you know, at the same time. Even though it felt a little weird, I kept on listening. And um, from listening to the law of attraction, then I researched on my own other universal laws, you know. But boy, when I stumbled on that law of assumption, that's when it all began to, you know, come together and make a whole lot of sense to me. Oh, and Dr. Ray, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I studied a lot. I studied a lot. And a lot of people that I really studied from was either on YouTube or when I went to the uh, bookstore. I used to go to Barnes & Noble and read a book pertaining to whatever I was going through. And so with that in mind, you know, I, I thought like, okay, well, if I'm going through this here now, there's somebody that had already been through this here and they have my answer. So I would actually sit there and I was younger then, so I didn't have much money. So I wasn't going to buy all the books, y'all. You can judge me if you want to. <laughs> I didn't buy the books. I would go up in there, give me a seat, and I would read the book and put it back on the shelf. I ain't fold no page. I ain't do nothing wrong with the book. But I needed that information out of that book at that time. And I sit there and I read it and I digest that thing and I'll put it back. And if it was too long, you know, I'm skimming through it. And if it was too long or if it was real juicy or whatever, I'll come back tomorrow and, you know, the next day. And I'll finish reading it and I'll pick up something else. And that's what I used to do with my downtime, you know, because I was really inquisitive throughout my journey. So I would stay in that spiritual section, though. In that spiritual section over there, you know, in Barnes and Noble, that's where you will find me. And and that was like my thing that I did. You know, a lot of people in their journey, you know, they go through the phases of, you know, you know, going out, clubbing, partying, per se. That stage for me really didn't last long at all in my life. I really always was hungry and, you know, thirsty for wisdom, knowledge, order, and some type of instruction for my soul, for the larger part of me. So basically on Fridays and Saturdays, that's where I used to be. <laughs> in Boys and Noble. Reading. Reading. Let's see. Why I got this silly clip on here? Hi, Divine. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I live in Rabbit Hole. Yeah. All of the Yeah, all of the internet. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't go to places 
where more wisdom is waiting for me or others from me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because it resonates with you better. You know, because how you feel really matters. And when I used to, like, go out, per se, you know, like, I used to dance, too. Like, I danced um, at different uh, places. So, what is this thing telling me? What does that mean? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It was showing me a feature on the on the live. But anyway, when I would go, because I was so in tune, when I would go out to certain places, I would feel the energy of the people that are there. Like, you know, the people that was depressed or sad or whatever, you know, sitting at the bar or whatever. I would feel the energy and I would know what was going on with them. So I really couldn't stay in those places long. I would have to go in and, you know, because I would like a dance, I would like go in, dance, and then I'd just leave, you know, like in the middle of the highlight of everything because it was so, so much a noise, like so much of noise. And at that time in my journey, I didn't know how to balance all of that energy coming at me at one time. So I would just go in, dance hard, 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 <laughs> and leave and just go my little self home. But that's me. That's me. Everybody different. Some people can take that and, you know, some people can't depend upon where you are in your journey. And that point in my life, I couldn't take it. Now I can because I know that I don't have to digest that energy no more. But, but then when you get on a certain frequency, you just don't want to be in certain places, no matter what. Even if you think, like, it'll be fun just to dance and show your face. You don't just want to be everywhere. You don't want to be everywhere. Sister, you are amazing. Oh, thank you, beloved. And so are you. Yeah, I love that accent. Oh, thank you, babe. Who's that? Tick oh, if I do like this now. Oh, okay. Now the glare is gone. Now I can see. Okay. www.tiktok. <laughs> That's your username? That's funny. Let's see. Your YouTube is my evening music. Oh, um, must listen. Okay, I see. Oh, speaking of my YouTube. I have like 10 videos that I'm going to be uploading. If you do not um, know my YouTube channel, it's going to be in my profile. I have 10 videos that I'm going to be uploading today. And these are videos that I was making along my journey of uh, living in the end. You know how I always tell you all when you're trying to manifest something, you tell no one? Well, because I wasn't telling no one, I was like secretly making videos along my manifestation journey of retiring and purchasing, you know, a home, moving out of state and all the things that I just did. So pretty much that's like my little tips, what my mind was thinking, what I was doing. And I even, you know, brought you all with me, you know, when I traveled out here, you know, looking for this particular house that I'm in right now, how I lived in the inn at night and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think if, if it were me and I were in a place of, you know, wanting to learn how to manifest, I would definitely watch those because during that moment, I was just being led. I was allowing, you know, surrendering to my subconscious, the universe, so to speak, and allowing life to unfold for me perfectly. And I was working on my mental every day. Nobody can penetrate in my mental because nobody outside of me knew what was really going on with me. And I held on to that to the very end. And so I honestly forgot that I was making the videos. And so yesterday I thought about it and I was looking on my computer. So I uploaded them all last night and I'm gonna be posting them later on today because I just want to put a, um, you know, a thumbnail on them or whatever. But that's going to be some good information for you all if you desire to learn more about my way of uh, manifesting. Now, keep in mind, everybody going to have their own way. But the thing about it is you find out other people's way and you think about your way and then you tweak, you know, maybe there's something with other people because other people be them been through things that you have not. Maybe there's something that this other person that can say that will get you into, you know, into sync to really being a master manifester for what is going on in your journey. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying be like me. I'm not saying follow me. You know, no, don't follow me. Follow you. Follow your internal guidance. But maybe something that I say can help you with your internal guidance in manifestation. So, yeah, so, so you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Your YouTube is my evening. must listen. Okay. 
You sound like you're from Trinidad. No, nope, I've never been there before. Hey, Trey, looking forward to it. Yeah, and I thought about you when I was um, uploading them last night. I was like, because I remember last time you had to remind me to post a video because sometimes I'd be forgetting. But um, I was like, Trey gonna be proud of me. I said that in my mind. Trey gonna be proud of me. I'm posting a whole bunch of uh, juice out here for him. But yeah, because I was really deeply into manifesting, you know, like, not that I'm not right now, but every day I did it in the morning, living in the end in the morning, as soon as I woke up and at night, everything that I'm saying on that, it might be like a lot, it might sound like a lot, but really it's no thing but paying attention to your thoughts. You're not really doing anything but paying attention to those thoughts. And so it led me here. It led me to the manifestation. Even before I, um, one of the videos, I was sitting in my car and I, I, I read the, uh, the, the retirement letter that, um, <laughs> that I had created and I shared it with you all. And I just recently, you know, sent that retirement letter, what, um, maybe a week or so ago that I had been sitting in my drafts. Now, mind you, these videos are gonna be from last year. So I might look a little different, you know, whatever, but the the wisdom, you know, from it is still gonna be fresh and you could use it at any point in your life. So it was last year, um, I had took, I took a trip, a retreat to Sedona, Arizona out here, where I am now and um, it was so good for my soul. If I would, if I would say anything about the energy here, if you've never been here, it's like heaven on earth to me. You know, like in the biblical text, how they talk about Jesus went to the mountain, and prayed and fasted and all these things, 40 days and 40 nights. And <laughs> even though I'm not into religion anymore, but if I would think about that as happening in the physical reality, I would feel as though that happened here. That's how the energy felt to me when I went on that retreat in Sedona. It was so much like high frequency. We were highly elevated, you know, in the mountains, nature, the animals, everything was just so perfect and so beautiful and peaceful. Even when you saw like the rapids and the coyotes and and everything else that we saw, I don't even know the names of some of those things. <laughs> but even though you saw those animals out there, when you made eye contact with them, they were so peaceful, like, you know, they just walked gracefully. Everything was just so perfect, right? So I went to Sedona, Arizona in the early part of more, not March, uh, August. And then when I got back home, since I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, later on in August, on August 29th, coincidentally, Katrina's anniversary, my house was destroyed all over again, right? And really, this is the thing that put me into the momentum of really wanting to um manifest a new home to get out of louisiana because i got tired of rinsing and repeating um constantly rebuilding the same home over and over again i got tired of that and and i didn't realize it so when that storm it was hurricane ida when it hit i was like man this is it he said man i ain't doing this here no more this is like the definition of insanity you know doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results you know and then I began to think about how many storms I had been through. And even as a little girl, you know, flooding. I remember my mom's house flooding, you know. And uh, we had boats and we were trying to go back and get some things in boats and stuff. You know, it's, but you get, you get so used to kind of like living in survival mode that you think that's normal. But boy, when that Hurricane Ida came out, I was like, no, this ain't normal. I can't, I can't, I can't do this no more. And so that night... I went to bed living in the inn and I was touching it, tasting it, smelling it, being here in my home that this was my new place, you know? And, and so on my journey, I started fixing up the house and everything out there. But on my journey, I just got this, this notion and then, then, oh, you got to understand this here. When you, when you start doing this here in your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind or the universe makes way for you so life is going to unfold for you based upon what you are now projecting what you are now manifesting and so everybody everybody in your universe goes get any assume the position of the role that they got to play so then coincidentally one of my neighbors 
was telling me, well, if you ever decide to move, I know people. I got I know people in Arizona. I got this top-notch realtor friend that I could connect you with. I was like, oh, really? And she gave me that person number who became my realtor. My neighbor down the street just coincidentally just told me, he's like, you know what? You need to you need to go visit Arizona. I think you'll like it out there. And I'm like, oh really? Now mind you, I ain't telling nobody nothing what I'm thinking because I don't believe in telling my reflections about anything inside of me because I don't want to meet that reflection that's gonna be my doubt and Thomas out there. So then a girlfriend that I um <laughs> a girlfriend that I had went to school with that I haven't seen since we graduated from high school. I saw her at Walmart one day and she was like, Oh, it's old nice to see you you look good you still look the same and da, da, da. i'm tired of being here and and i met somebody out in arizona and he was telling me about how beautiful it is in the mountains and and um the only thing is the temperature is different they have the dry heat and we have the humidity she was just telling me everything that i already knew it was like she was me she was talking to me about what she was doing but she was telling me that she was moving out there and i was like well, girl good luck to you i think that is beautiful i think you should go i think you should go or you should not look back i mean everything was just constantly telling me reminding me of arizona <laughs> and so when i decided um to go out there i would pee rather with that realtor lady uh, we were looking around for homes and because in my mental when I was in New Orleans I was living in the inn already every night. I knew what my home already felt like I knew what these floors right here. I'm bad for the y'all I knew what these floors right here already felt like right? I knew what my carpet and my bedroom already felt like I knew how these cabinets back here I knew how they smelled because that's how what I was doing. I was living in the inn and I was living in the inn with my senses <laughs> Oh, this is so beautiful. But anyway, because I knew what it looked like and smelled like and how it felt to me as being home when me and that realtor lady was in places that we walk in the door I was like oh let's go this ain't it <laughs> because I was I knew in my mind I'm gonna know my home I'm, I'm gonna know my home when I feel it because cause it's gonna fit I'm gonna already know it because I've already experienced it when I was living in the inn in my bed you know and so we went through houses and we was just rolling through houses, just rolling through houses. She's like, wait, there's this, this new um, community that they're building and I want you to take it out. Just one more. And I was like, all right, well, if this one don't work out, you know, I'll plan another trip, you know, but I got to get back home. And so she had bought me in a model, a model home. It, it wasn't actually this particular one. It was across the street, though. And um, <laughs> when she bought me in the model home, I looked around as soon as I walked up in the door. I said, this is it. This is home. This is home. This is the floor plan. These are the type of floors that I was walking on. The carpet, everything was everything that I had already in my mind. And um, she was like, this is it? I was like, yeah, this is it. I didn't even walk through all the way through it. And I didn't even know how much to think of at that point. I just knew it was it. And it was mine. And she was like, well, wait, let me check and see if they have any more left. And, um, and I said, okay. And she was like, they have one more. And I was like, really? And it was the same model style. It was this model style that they had left. I was like, yeah, it's mine. I told you, this is it. This is my house. The name of the street resonated with me. Everything was so perfect. That's how you know when it's yours. That's how you know when you're in an alignment. <sighs> Everything just, just flows. Everything. <laughs> Wait, let me read some of these comments because I'm just talking. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That's how I was in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arizona is magical. It really is. It really is, Gen X. I'm manifesting moving there. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Come on, let me know when you get here, babe. I'm gonna be doing um retreats um up in here too in Sedona. The mountains called me here. Yeah, the um I think it's called Red Red Rock, Red Mountain. I'm not familiar with the names or whatever, but that's my favorite one. It's really really big, rich, dark. It's like so mineral rich and it's so a high frequency. It's like you know, you just be zoned out just looking at that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Frederick. Thank you for joining. But yeah, so everything really worked out. Hey. Hey, Tia. Tia. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kay. 
So, wait, it's a new moon? Oh, I didn't even know. Thank you for letting me know, Kay. I just saw that. Thank you for letting me know. But yeah, so that's what I was doing to get here. And, and so in my mind, so, so this, oh, this is another thing. So if you have more than one thing that you're trying to manifest at one time, in my mind, when I was living in my end, and I was telling you I was using my senses and touching it and tasting it and experiencing it and everything, what I also was doing was creating abundance for me too. Because I knew that I wanted the home, but I also knew I want to retire too. I don't want to, I don't want to be working when I get to this home. <laughs> So what I did with that in mind is I looped it. I looped it. So when I was walking on my floor, remember I using your senses, and when I was walking on my floor with my carpet, I would be walking to go to my laptop to log into my business, you know, my, my sort of weird um, website. I would log into, in my human imagination, I, I log into my bank account. You know, I logged in in my human imagination to all the orders that I received that day. You know, I logged in mentally and I'm sitting there mentally pretending, so to speak, using my imagination that I'm stroking the keys on the computer, that I'm looking at the amount of money in my account, you see, and that I'm, I know that I am abundance and I feel good. And so I would even loop what I was going to do that day in it, you know, the, the hiking, you know, the adventures, you know, the, you know, Grand Canyon sites and just doing what I wanted to do with my day because now work was no more. You see what I'm saying? So that's how I kind of looped my retirement in there. So you don't have to, you don't have to know when, or should I say, you don't have to know what, how it's going to happen. You just have to be in alignment and know what it is that you want to experience from it happening. And so I always was told, you know, like, you know, just get in alignment with your purpose and your passion and your, the money per se is going to come. So I just wanted my passion to be included in it. That's why I would, you know, log into my website. And so all of this stuff I was just doing mentally, just mentally. I wasn't doing this physically. I was going to work. But when I would go to work in my mind, I wasn't tripping about being at work. I wasn't sad about being at work. When I was at work, I was doing work and I was like smiling, like low key, kind of like smiling, looking at the people like, mm, I'm sure going to miss you because I'm not going to be here always. Oh, my days are numbered up in the air. Yeah, I'm going to be retiring soon. Oh, you need me to do that? Okay, give it here. I'll take care of that. No problem. Because I know I'm not going to be doing this here always. You know, so I found the good. And I was paying attention to my physical reality, living in it as if, you know, this is my old thoughts. Look what I manifested. I manifested really a good job. I mean, Intergy, I worked for a utility company in New Orleans. Intergy really has been good to me, you know. Throughout the 22 years, I don't have no complaints. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss this place. Yeah, I could miss the people, the good relationships that I had. Yeah, this this is a beautiful part of my journey. It was a necessary part of my journey because by working at Intergy, a utility company, it taught me about my energy, you know? It really did, you know, frequency, you know, um, high voltage, you know, like lights being now disconnected, you know, things like that resonated to me as far as my avatar, my physical being, you know, partial service, you know, I, I, I related and I took it in and then I made it personal to me. That's how I learned about energy, frequency and vibration from my job, from doing my job. But I just got spiritual on my job while on my journey and I just flipped it into this here, you know, <laughs> let's see, let's see. Let's see. Wow. Okay. I'm here for a few. Good to see you. Hey, Miss B and So. Thank you for being here. Hey, Dion. Hey, you just stuck up in here, huh? So, um, there is so much to see and do here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am in O E. Oh, that's H O E. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Arizona. But, um, that's what I did. And that's the mindset that I had to get here. And if I can do this, you can do this. But you gotta not have that doubt. You gotta not be doing it and then doubting it. 
Because even in the biblical text, they say the double-minded person, a man, is unstable in all his ways. Don't think that he's going to receive, in so many words, they said, don't think he's going to receive anything from God. Because you're unwavering. you got to just know that you know in every area of your life, in your mind, you got to know. Like, I knew when I went to work, oh, I'm not going to be here. I knew when I went to sleep, yep, this is what I wanted. I knew throughout the day, ah. Uh, I'm about to move. You know, you just got to know. This is what they be talking about in church. You got to know that you know that you know that you know. Remember they just used to say that? Yeah, you just got to know. <laughs> you got to know because you creating a thing. You creating it. Yeah. Especially what you said about speaking your plans to your reflections. Definitely. Don't tell them people nothing. Don't tell them people nothing. No, 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 no. Because, and I learned it by opening up my mouth, telling somebody who was older that I was thinking about leaving the company. And I wasn't saying anything about Arizona at that point. I wasn't saying nothing about that, but I was just thinking about leaving. And they told me, you better not, you crazy? Where you think you going? Don't, don't you leave here, uh-uh. You ain't gonna get no better than this. And I'm like, what? No, that's your thought. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not telling nobody nothing no more. I'm already an introverted person, so I could keep my mouth shut easily. <laughs> easily. I could be up in the room and you you would think you ain't even there. That's how much I could ignore people in situations easily. Okay? So I just shut up. I just shut up. It's like, okay, okay, we ain't, we ain't about to have all of them doubting people up in my physical reality. No, because I'm already dealing with my thoughts and I don't need my, none of my reflections out there wilding out telling me, no, it ain't gonna happen. Or, oh, are you sure? Or, what you gonna do about da 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 da? When I honestly, keep in mind, I'm just manifesting. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna do about da 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 da. But I need you up in my face trying to tell me and remind me that I don't know. You see, that's why you don't tell them people nothing. Y'all telling people nothing. You, your girlfriend, you know how you are. Like, you know, and I went through it too, you know, when we're younger. I mean, maybe some older people, they like to tell their girlfriend everything, you know, about what's going on and whatever. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This your girlfriend right here. <laughs> this your girlfriend right here. Best friends forever. Your higher self. Your subconscious mind. You know, the conscious and subconscious. Just the friends. That's the only relationship that's really, really important to y'all and the rest of them people. Uh-uh. Don't you tell them people your business like that when you're manifesting because you will mess you up. They will help you mess you up. Just like Jesus in the biblical text. Jesus had somebody. He had the Dalton Thomas. He had the Judas that betrayed him. It was right there in front of him. And it was him. He was a, a version of him that was expressed in physical form, so to speak, in this allegory text. Showing him a part of him that was up in here. <laughs> uh-uh mm -mm. don't tell people nothing don't tell them i'm telling you don't tell them don't even tell me don't tell the people nothing just go for what, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest and know that it's yours yeah i get that all the time from old people yeah because a lot of them are kind of like stuck in their ways you know you know, and they like to project based upon their old experiences. And some of them were, you know, limited thinkers and don't really want to come outside of that limited box. We, meanwhile, there's a boundless universe, you know, and everything don't happen according to how they think it. Like somebody, even in a TikTok that I posted, I said something. Oh, that's the one when I was showing y'all that I know how to um, cut my hair myself. And the, a black man an older black man, salt and pepper. I'm saying he older because he had the salt and pepper, you know, beard or whatever. He looked older than me. Anyway, he said, um, Arizona is not a place for a black person to move. Like, and I replied to him. I was like, sir, please don't come over here projecting your thoughts over here on me. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That's you. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. People can say that about New Orleans. <laughs> People can say that about any place. Why you come here to tell me that? You know, that's you. You keep you over there. So don't don't get them started because your reflections are so wild and out. And the thing about those type of people, that type of energy, once you, you know, sit there and, and, and entertain, so to speak, and dwell upon what they say, now you got a whole line because anything that you're giving too much of your attention to gets greater and greater. Now you got a whole line of doubt and Thomases. Now you got a whole line of Judas in your in your physical reality. And then your manifestation go womp 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 womp. 
They'll destroy it. They'll kill it. Yeah, don't do that. Let's see. Don't Diana's. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't you quit your government job. That's what they would say. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. When really, when really and truly most people that really making good money, they're not on a nine to five. You know, the millionaires per se, they're not doing a nine to five thing. They're really not. But everybody different in their thought process. Yeah, me too. That's where I am now. Yeah. Oh, y'all talking to each other. Not over. So you say it's over. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You're proud of me. I'm proud of you too, babe. And just being here, being able to grow in your journey, being here to listen, you know, because you have to be at a place where you really are hungry for more, searching for more to even be sitting here watching me right now. You know, conscious to a point where, you, you know, you're inquisitive about this thing called manifestation. And that's that's a beautiful, pivotal moment in our life. You know, when we're coming from old beliefs from religion to, to changing our minds. Like, you know what? I don't want to believe that no more. Because a belief it can be changed, you know? It's just something that you done told yourself over and over until it became law in your mind. So you could tell yourself something else over and over again. And then you could have a new law, a new program, a new setting. And it could be more... Um, boundless, you know, it could be unlimited versus your old limited program that you had before. So that's beautiful. I learned my lesson to manifest to myself. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Being So, manifest to yourself. Don't don't be telling everybody. And that way, when it come, you sit there, and it's not about ego and stuff. It's about you understanding your inner self about you knowing thyself and it feels good and you can sit there and be like yeah i manifested that i remember that yeah because that's what we're here for the the thrills of expansion within ourselves to show or remember or remind ourselves that we're god in physical form we got to remind people out there mm -mm. we got to remind people not they just think you a regular little human being <laughs> if they want to but your mental just, it's a mental game. So your mental just got to be up, up to par to the things that you're wanting. It ain't about, you know, looking a certain way. It's about what are you being? What are you being in here? Because <laughs> anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody is doing it right now. The people that are in lack, they're, they're, they're manifesting. They're manifesting more of that lack. More of whatever it is that they are thinking about all day long. They, they manifest. Every day. Everybody is. Yes, God will show up, the Bible said, and suddenly, okay? Yes, let's see, Gen X, I'm excited because I feel like I'm being moved into a position for something great, yeah. And guess what? How you feel matters, and you just milk that feeling, and you will. Just by you saying that, believing that, you will. Because you, that spoken word, that feeling, that excitement, that's the thing that's getting you there that electromagnetic spark of energy. The electromagnetic spark of energy come from what are you thinking in the subconscious mind and what are you feeling in his heart. And when they get together, they make an electromagnetic spark of energy and they give life to whatever it is you're talking about. That's how that work is. That's the energy part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just found out that my job over six and a half years is over July. Ooh, July 31st, next month. Yeah, we on, we're still in June the 28th. Yeah, it's over. And you know, sometimes, you know, well, I wanna say sometimes really all the time, life be pushing us. Sometimes life have to push us, certain people rather, and I'm not projecting that at you, I'm just saying in general, certain people to lose the job to lose the house, to lose that, and you be thinking it is set back, but it really be setting up for something greater, you know, because if not, that person sometimes wouldn't have left, you know, because I was talking to a, a friend of mine who was telling me about, you know, a situation, a disagreeable situation that he had got into with something and, and in a leaving, leaving a certain area, and I was like, you know what? I think that's a beautiful thing. I really think. I mean, you're talking about all of this here, but I, I think you need not talk about that thing no more. And I think you need to look at the good because where you're going is a great place. 
How about you think about the new beginning of where you're going? How about you, you saying, okay, that was supposed to happen like that then. Yeah, it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to give my mind right because I kept going back to those old shitty situations and them no good friends. And I was going in a circle over and over. So now life can force you to go in another environment with a new start, a new beginning. You know, you got this and this and that lined up over there. Why don't you look ahead and stop looking back? You know, sometimes it be like that, but we don't, we get, you know, emotions. We're like, oh my God, you know, it's over. You know, this is the end. I'm not going to have this, you know, oh, I'm going to cry. But your higher self is like staying in, 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 in alignment. Your higher self is saying, yeah, this is part of the journey. Come on, come on. I'm not going to come down there with you with them crybaby tears. I'm going to remain in alignment. This is what you want me to do. Stay in alignment. I'm going to be over here. Come on. And so you'll you hire yourself just to be like beckoning for you to keep on going in the journey. And you and you realize it's after the tears though. You know how after like a relationship or whatever is over and you, you cry. Maybe your heart out and then you look back and like, why did I cry over him? Like, man, I'm so happy that, that was, that's over because that was a lesson. I needed to learn that to get to this year. And I just wasted a little time crying and boohooing when my higher self was just beckoning me and preparing me. Because really all I'm doing here is learning lessons and winning all the time. All I got to do is just keep on going. Just keep on going and keep on moving to the rhythm of my beat. Of what feels good to me. And I'll always be following my higher self, the larger part of me. The part of me that stayed on the spiritual side while I experienced this so-called physical reality. The Lord departed me that's in tune with all things, infinite intelligence that knows everything. If I stay in alignment with it, I cannot go wrong. I cannot go wrong. Yeah. Let's see. Did I miss something up here? That's why I am now just proud of you. Yeah, I got that one. All right. Do you use crystals? Yeah. You know, not as much as I used to. But yeah, my um, I use them. I use them. My favorite right now is my new mic. That's the one that I I use the most now. I, my favorites are are like the clear quartz crystals, the um, amethyst. The reason why clear quartz is just a clear energy. The amethyst because that was really my first one, and I fell in love with it because it drew me to it when i was downtown new orleans on canal i saw somebody with it and i just i don't know it was just like a magnet to me and the new mic because of where i am in my journey right now i love i always when i talk about crystals i always like to share that you are always your the most powerful crystal you ever own so as far as using them from a day to day i don't do that no more because when dealing with these different things, you go to different levels with different things. So I'm not saying that I'm greater than, but I'm just saying that um, I know my power, my inner power is all I'm saying. But I respect the crystals for what they do. I just don't carry them, you know, like I used to. But I appreciate them for, for their part that they played, like, in my journey. I do. And I respect people that still use them all. But it, it's just like, it's just like anything though. It's just like food. Like, okay, we could look at crystals and we could look at food the same way. You know, people be talking about, you know, you know, if you eat lighter with the meats and all, you become a vegan, you know, you get your energy and you have your minerals and everything in the food. But if you really think about it, you just step back. If you step back in your thinking, you step back and look at the bigger picture, you realize that, okay, all is God. So that means all of the things that we are eating, even though they supposedly are vibrating at different frequencies, all of it is God, right? So with that in mind, if all is God, <laughs> you really can't go wrong with whichever crystal you pick. You can't go wrong with whatever you're eating. What it is, is your mind, the thing that you're thinking when you're eating. The thing that you're eating. Now don't get me wrong. I don't want to eat no meat. Just because I just don't want to. But it's when you're eating it. It's the thoughts of others. Your doubting Thomases that's out there. 
or your thoughts that's making you think, oh, maybe this this me toxic. Or will you listen to the news when the news told you that they were doing stuff to the, to the pigs and all that. All that is in your mind. If it's up there, then so shall it be. Then so shall it be in your body. They ain't going to be good in your body because your mind think that. So if you think, like for me, for example, the amethyst is really, really strong. The clear course is really, really strong. Oh, that new mic, though. You know, the new mic was for the gods. Oh, my God. If that's up in here, that's a belief that I've told myself. So it's going to be powerful. But if I think... If I change that belief and I think instead, you know what? I'm more powerful than these crystals. <laughs> you know, that I'm at a higher frequency than these crystals. You know, then you can graduate from that. See, this is thing really running the show. Any way you look at it, whether it's food, crystals, whether it is religion, spirituality, whatever. If this thing said it is, so shall it be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I hope I missed some. This thing went jumping. Uh, preaching to my soul. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. The horse is about you. Wait, I didn't mean to do that. Something just jumped up on there. Oh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the concept of fear. Fear, I talked about that a little bit yesterday. Fear is the opposite of faith. But it's like, so back to everything being energy, frequency, and vibration. So so just like food, for example, like, so meat, dead animals, we'll see that's low frequency, right? And then high frequency, let's say soursop. Let's say key limes is at high frequency, right? So all is God though, right? The animal, is God, even though it's at a low frequency, death or whatever, it's still God vibrating at the lowest frequency. <laughs> because remember, God gives life and God take it away. God is the Alpha and the Omega, right? But this, in this reality, there's an illusion of separation. So we go on with the fear that you was asking about. Fear is the opposite of the faith, right? But sometimes... We are in a season of fear, and fear can be necessary for us because if we don't want to attract that very thing that we're fearing, we have to have faith. We have to increase our frequency and get back to the faith state of being, get back to a higher God state of being. So it is necessary sometimes in the journey. <laughs> the most important thing about this here, when you have these two ends or which are governing governed underneath the law of polarity the most important thing is that you have a healthy balance with them okay you have to have a healthy balance with them so that's what i think about fear it's necessary sometime in the journey but you got to get to that point where you, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death even though i walk through the valley at my lowest self at my lowest frequency I shall fear no evil. I shall not fear because I'm walking on that faith because I've increased my frequency and I decided that I'm going to have faith. I'm deciding that I, I'm deciding that I am an eternal being and I can never get this thing no matter where I'm vibrating at today or tomorrow. I can never get this thing called life wrong because I've decided that I'm going to just have that now kind of faith. Yeah. The substance of things hopeful, but the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Just like I was talking about earlier when I was going on that job. You know, yeah, I got that now kind of faith. Hey, y'all, I'm not going to be here long. Why? Because I got that now kind of faith. I, I, don't, I don't know how, how this thing going to play out, but I got that now kind of faith. I decided I'm going to vibrate with the faith. Because the fear, the fear, the fear was the thing that was making me have to go there every day. That was the fear. <laughs> I'm going to explore this thing. It's my season now. I just want to explore this thing called faith. Because I can't get this thing wrong anyway. I can't get this wrong because I, I know this one thing. If I stay in alignment with my truth, if I stay in alignment with my passion, the universe is going to continue to make way for me. That's, that, these are the things that I know. How do I know? Because I believe it. How, why do I believe it? How did I come up with this belief? Because I told this thing to myself over and over until it became law for me. And it's worked for me in other different ways in my life. And I'm just going to stand on that. 
I'm not going to stand on it because you're standing on it. I'm going to stand on it for, because it feels good to me. These are the things that I know. These are things that I know work for me. These are things that keep me in balance. And I haven't been, I haven't went wrong following me. I went wrong when I followed them, though. <laughs> I went wrong when I followed the, 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 you know, the click over there, though. Yeah, I went wrong. But when I begin to go right, per se, right felt good to my heart. Right felt good to my soul. Right kept me in alignment with me. Right felt like peace. Right is a thing that helps me lay my head on that pillow and go to sleep in bliss and joy and peace. Because it felt good to the larger part of me. Yeah, let's see. Hello, girl. Hey, brown sugar. Thank you for being Hey, Kilo. I was just thinking about you. Look what I manifested you up in here. I was like thinking to myself a couple of minutes ago. I wonder if she's uh, available or at work or whatever. I'm on a different time zone than y'all. I'm 12, 22. But anyway, good to see you here. Because of you, I changed my thoughts on food when I eat. Yeah, that's the most important thing. That is the most important thing. This is why in the biblical text, you know, like in an old contract in, um, or the Old Testament, you know, they were talking, I think it's in the book of Leviticus, when they would talk about, you know, these things are unclean. And they talk about the pig and all of this here, you know, the Muslims and all of these different religions. They don't want to eat the pork and this and that and the dirt, right? But then in the new contract, right, when Jesus supposedly came forth, in the allegory text, they say, and Jesus was just like saying, just, just, just bless your food. Just, just bless your food. You know? <laughs> because what, what was happening, that, that was just like the conscious mind was in that O, but then the connection with the subconscious mind of reprogram, because that's what really Jesus was trying to teach, to reprogram the mind through subconscious thoughts. And let this mind be in you, not the old contract mind when you was dealing with the conscious stuff. No, the subconscious mind. Change it to this here. <laughs> Renew your mind to this here. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Because that super con that subconscious mind is connected to the superconscious. And the superconscious is all. And all is God. And now you're separated from the delusion of separation. Now you're separated from that law of polarity per se. <laughs> You, you don't need that because you're looking at, you see the hierarchy of it all, that it all is God. Oh, oh, you sad? Oh, you, you still God. You fearful? You still God. You love, you joy, you still God. You're just vibrating at different frequency because God is the all. Yeah, yeah. So that's why how you feel, regardless of what we're talking about, money, food, job, manifestation, how you feel going to matter. That's going to be your internal GPS to let you know that, yeah, what you're doing is right. Let's see. Happy loving thoughts while I cook and eat. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And, and you can think about that from the elders. You remember how, like, Gramonium, Gramonium used to cook, you know, like, chitlins and red beans and cornbread and oxtail and, you know, all of that stuff there. <laughs> the soul food. The soul food, like, right? But here's the thing. The difference now is the fact that when Gromonium used to make those things, Gromonium got up in that kitchen and Gromonium had pure intentions of love and Gromonium made that stuff from scratch. Grandma wasn't really pulling out stuff that was in boxes. Grandma wasn't going through the drive-thru with Chick-fil-A, you know, where things are being rushed and in processed and all of this here. Grandma and them sat there and made the roux even, you know, for the gravy from scratch, right? All of this here energy that Grandma was conjuring up in the physical by her movement of energy plus her love energy that she was putting into this food so grandma really was making through thought because she was saying oh i'm making this this gonna be good for my baby and oh oh it feels good to be able to bless my baby grandma was creating an electromagnetic form of energy because once thought becomes connected to that feeling that i'm trying to get you to understand here it becomes an electromagnetic wave of energy so you were you, you were really digesting love <laughs> you were really living off of Grummo's love. That's what that was really all about. And so when you digest that thing, you couldn't help but to think about that love. 
You wasn't thinking about, oh, wait, Grandma, you eat, Grandma, I don't think this is a high frequency animal. Grandma, what kind of pig was this? Was this a grass fed animal or whatever, you know, to be, you know, the organic thing? You wasn't thinking that. Your thoughts was bouncing off of what was going on up in that house at that time because that's how, that's how thought or energy works. So everybody was feeding or eating love. And so everybody was being filled up with love. And people wasn't getting sick back then. You see? So, so it's really about the thought. And so now people are being rushed with, with the food. That's why you got to be particular about what you're eating, who you're eating from. So, so you're eating this fast food from little teenagers that don't probably won't even be on a job. From Popeye's people that's probably mad or whatever. With chemicals. Ain't, ain't nothing coming from scratch, you know. So we don't have to love energy inside of it. And the people in the maybe the fast food place ain't thinking about, oh, this going to be some nourishment for the, for the souls of the people. Oh, I'm doing this for my baby. They're not thinking like that. So those thoughts is what you digesting. You see what I'm saying here? You, you digesting the Popeye people thought. Like they don't want to be at work. They ain't making enough money. Then you, you digesting how the people at Popeye's feel. They hate that damn job. They so tired of that shit, it's hot. They ain't getting paid, you know? They don't even want to work there. You know, they slipping and sliding, you know, in the back in the kitchen because of too much of grease. They want to go home. They texting, sneaking. They, they probably in the back, probably hungry themselves, probably trying to sneak a piece of chicken in their mouth. And so we eating the thoughts of that, the feeling of that. We digesting that. That's all this thing is about. None of this stuff is real anyway. This is just energy, frequency, and vibration. If you look at things like that, you know, okay, I'm going to fix my thoughts. And, oh, I'm going to be mindful of, you know, you know, what kind of thoughts I'm picking up, what kind of feelings I'm picking up. You do that, you, you can't do nothing wrong. You the master the thing called life, really. Because life is a game, and that's how you play it. You play it right here. It's your joystick. You're speaking the truth. Hey, Justin. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's how that thing go. That's how that thing go. This is just thought. This is thought. And so, in, in people, even when they get medication or whatever, it is really like that placebo effect with the medicine. You know, it's just like, mm, if you think that medicine ain't gonna work, then it ain't gonna work. Because I know I can't take no medicine. That's, the, that's my program. I ain't taking no medicine. What I'm gonna do with a rock? Digested a rock. Because that's what my program say. Like, in my mind, that rock ain't gonna do nothing for me. In my mind, that's why I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. But in my mind, though, if if if, if I needed something, you know, I go to herbs because in my mind, my law that governs my subconscious mind is that the herbs is for the healing of the nation, that that's gonna heal me. But the rock, you know, I'm talking about the peel. <laughs> that's what I call peels. On um, the rock, the rock ain't gonna do nothing. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna release that rock in the bathroom. And it's going to be a waste of time. So don't give me no rocks. I'm not taking no rocks no more. You know, but I, I, I digest that the herbs. I'll get me some citrus fruit. You know, I'll drink me some H2O. But I'm not going to digest no, no, no rocks and think that it's going to heal my body. Because my, my mental don't work like that. All is mine. All is mental. My, my mental don't believe in that. It don't. And for those that do, you know, that's a beautiful thing. And if it works for you, that's because your mental believes in it. But mine, mine don't. I, I, I rewrote that, that program. I ain't want that program no more. And you can rewrite yours if that's what you want. Especially when you get to a place in your journey where the stuff ain't working for you no more. Because that means you're picking up the um, thoughts of other people. That means you, you're looking for expansion. That means you're daring to do something different if it ain't working. You know, just like religion. When, when you get to a point where you're looking around and you're questioning, you know, religion. That means you, your mind is ready for expansion for something different. You already experienced religion. So your mind saying, okay, well, come on, let's, let's expand. Let's do the spirituality thing. Let's dare to do something different because we're God. And we came forth in physical form to experience all. Oh, come on, let's do something different. If you want to free frequency, your, your body just telling you, come on, let's do something different, man. Let's, 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 let's practice this thing called faith, man. It's time out for all this scary age. Let me, let me try that faith. You know? That's how I look at things, you know? <laughs> let's see let's see wow oh damn thanks for speaking on this hi chris thanks for being here what is that zakaria am i saying that right thanks for sharing the live i appreciate that let's see uh just said i have to be honest i bring in a positive vibe when i show up to popeyes it's still pretty good there you go there you go and, and you could do that. 
Because you get to a place, and, and that's what I'm speaking of. You can get to a place where you trump all of that. You trump all of that. That even though you don't believe in it, you know, as being healthy, you can transform, transform anything. It's about transforming the energy of it. Just like grandma was doing. Grandma was up in the kitchen. She was, she was, she was, she was eating the dead animals and feeding it to us. But she transformed the energy of it. That's what I'm talking about. She turned it into love. So when you go to Popeyes and everybody up in there, you know, you, you, the, the, the people in your reality, your reflections, supposed to be moving to the rhythm of your beat instead of you, us, moving to the rhythm of theirs. So when we go to certain places, we could, we could ask for that Popeyes chicken. We could, we could ask for, you know, the chitlins or whatever and change our mind. Let me tell you, they have these potato chips. I'm not in New Orleans, but... These, these little Cheetos, these little New Orleans Cheetos, they come in an orange bag. I think they call Cheetos. Anyway, I try not to look at the bag because I eat pretty healthy, but those little Cheetos things are good, like, right? And so every time I buy those Cheetos, I think in my mind that this is some magnesium, this is my chlorophyll, this is my iron, this is my zinc, this is the healthiest potato chip that they offer in New Orleans only because I like it only because I'm not going to read no daggone um, ingredients on it I know about dextrose I know about high fructose corn syrup I know about the dyes and all of that I know about health and wellness the ins and out of it but I'm not about to read those ingredients because that's one chip that I ain't letting go of <laughs> I don't care and so I just transform the energy of it and when I eat it I smack it and I'm like yeah oh this is so healthy Oh yeah, this year, this year bag, yeah, it's an exception to all of them other ingredients. None of them ingredients in my bag. They ain't do that to my bag. Because as a man think it, so is he, and all of this here is mental. So you can eat what you want, really, you can. If your mind is powerful enough, you can. Now you, now you know when it, when it ain't powerful enough is if you eat this stuff and you end up getting sick. You eat it and you have those negative thoughts and you, you can hear those negative thoughts, those habitual thoughts, then you know that you're not really up to par there. But you can transform it if you have that mental. Because <laughs> all is God. All is God. And you make it not God through your thought by thinking negative of it. Let's see. So, yeah, you can do that. Good point, uh, Justin. Yeah, it's still pretty good, huh? Oh my God, I can visualize this. Hey, 20, Stefan. Let's see. A lot of us live in a survival state. The mental waves are not. Oh my God, you said that. V. V. Dite. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Right. V. Dot. Let me tell you. What I realize about New Orleans is that it feels like one. New Orleans will be saying, now nah, 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 don't get it twisted. There'll always be a place that I call home. But it really, in hindsight, you realize this afterwards. Like, you know, kind of like when you own a, a job that may have been stressful for a long time. And then um, you, you quit it or something. And, and, or you go on vacation from it. You go on vacation from it. And then you realize, dang. I was stressed out. You only realize you stressed out when it's time to go back. When a vacation is almost over. That's when you realize it. But... That's how it is in certain states. Because I feel that way simply because in New Orleans, we were always rebuilding. You know, you go to your local Home Depot and, um, and people will be like talking about how, you know, insurance is so high and, and oh, if another storm come, oh, I'm leaving. You, you know, you're just in survival. And if you watch the news, which I really didn't, but I could hear from my friends because they would try to still tell me, even though they knew I didn't watch the news, they'll be telling me about, you know, oh, you can't go, you know, downtown to magazine because, you know, they got the car, you know, they got the car robbers there and the killings over here. And so and you got to hide your purse when you go here, you lock your door when you go here. And you realize that, man, I, I was in survival mode and I didn't even know it. And so now here, in Arizona, I'm not saying, you know, that maybe nothing ever happens here. Because like I say, I don't even watch the news. But people that I know that live here and that have lived here for years that are from New Orleans, they say, you know what? It's, it's, it's not like New Orleans no more. You could kind of like go to the store. I, mean, I They were telling me I went to the store. I'm 
left my house open, you know, and it's not survival mode, you know, nothing was missing, you know, everything was, you know, energetically still in alignment when we got back. And so I believe that this is just my opinion based upon my feeling, and it might be different for you, but I was in survival mode when I was in New Orleans. And to give another chakra, so that would be my root chakra in New Orleans. But here in Arizona, I feel with all of my being that I'm in more of my Christ conscious crown chakra here. It's like I went from like the bottom to the top. Remember that song? Started from the, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> started from the bottom, now my whole team in here. <laughs> So anyway, that's how it feels to me. Yeah, if it doesn't come from the ground, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, I don't normally want it either. As a matter of fact, I want to grow in my yard. I want to grow my own food to eat and stuff. But if I decide, like the, um, the other person was saying, who that was, Justin, I think, the other person was saying, if I decide, you know, to go maybe to a Popeye's, ain't going to be nothing wrong with that, though, because in my mind... All is God and all is mental and I can do whatever feels good at that moment for me. And, and I won't judge me. And I won't and I won't judge that, that food. I'll look at that food as if it is God. And I'll do what like Jesus said in the biblical text. Just bless that food. Just bless that food. Because <laughs> all of this is God. All is God. Let's see. It doesn't okay, I did that one. Let's see. I build food. Wait, oh man. The screen jumped up. I ha I saw something. Wait. Okay, here it is. I build pools for a living, and I want my job to have positive vibe because people be looking. Yeah. Yeah. Your voice. I can tell if it's... Oh, I'm from Louisiana. Yeah. You feel build pools for a living. That's beautiful, uh, Justin. I, I, learned out a, I learned a lot about the body, my physical body, by owning a pool in the last house that I had and, you know, keeping it in balance per se. It's just like, you know, us, you know, keeping it in balance. It was a salt water pool. And so, you know, you had to have, to have a salt, but you couldn't have too much of muratic acid because if, if you put too much muratic acid, you know, you're taking all of your salts and your minerals out of it. You had to clean your cells. And sometimes, you know, you had to do your little test strips to see if it was in the proper pH balance and all of this here. And that's just like the body, you know? And so, and so we need our key lines, our citrus fruit sometimes in, in lieu of the muratic acid, you know? And we need our minerals, like our pink Himalaya sea salt, and you know, and we gotta clean our cells because that um, that um, uh, key lime it it help to clean the cells, like the liver, the kidneys, and stuff. And so we are, you see, everything and everyone is us pushed out. So we are the swimming pool too. <laughs> and so we have to stay in a healthy balance too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Let's see back window and look at a pool oh okay because people be looking out their back window. yeah yeah that's true yeah positive vibes all day justin i feel that greetings and grand rising hey azaria i like that name i like your name BYOV. <laughs> bring your own vibe i like that justin i like that <laughs> Red 40. Yeah, I know about that one too. Elmer's Jones. Yes, Cherry. Those, those suckers are so good in the orange bag. The El Elmer's, you're right, with the little black, um, look like, um, New Orleans street sign, like on the, on the front of the pack. Yeah, I wish I had some right now. I wish I would have bought me about six bags before I left, but I don't have none. I'm like, hopefully I could find some maybe on Amazon because that's my favorite chips, El Elmer's. Yep. Yep, that's them, Terry. Hey, Kiki. Thank you for being here, Kiki. Oh, man, the comments went up really high. Has to... Uh, someone else took the name. Oh, okay. Oh, V-Dot. That's what it's like. Okay. V-Dot. Okay. I like that. I've heard that even when you don't sleep well, you can say, oh, I slept well and trick your mind. Yeah, because all is mental. All is mental. And so you just rewrite it is what you're doing. Kind of like how I did a, a video on TikTok about rewriting your story. If you didn't have a so-called good night of sleep, 
then you rewrite it. You go back to the moment in time before you went to sleep, and then you make your sleep what you wanted it to be. And then you jump back into your now moment and live based upon what you just rewrote. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you can rewrite anything, and that way you won't fall ill to, you know, the consequences. So that means you won't be sleeping no more. If you rewrite some kind of trauma, you won't be kind of like having those same situations show up again in your physical reality with different characters. That's the key about um, rewriting the story. Yeah, so it won't keep playing in the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind think that you want more of it. Yeah, that's beautiful. V dot, I got it. That's how it was my whole life in New York City. Yeah, yeah. That's that was about medication. I me. Oh, I see. I wish I had a green thumb. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I don't fool with no medicine. Not even like a Tylenol or anything like that. But yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't. Well, I don't want to say I don't have a green thumb. I haven't done it in a large capacity. Is what I'm saying here. But I will. Because my backyard is going to be my little garden of Eden. <laughs> right now, the garden of Eden ain't got nothing on it. It's a clean slate, you know, before Adam and Eve had got there. And I'm going to plant in every soil back there. And I'm going to do all kinds of fruits and stuff. And my salads and my herbs and stuff. And I'm going to get myself. Because there's something so special about being able to eat from your own garden. Oh, my God. That food would be so rich. Man, it ain't nothing like those organic stuff at no whole food store no sprouts or nowhere it's t like top of the line it don't even taste like that even their or organic stuff don't taste nothing like from your garden in your backyard and it probably go back to how i was talking about just what grandma was doing i'll be gardening with love it'll be that love energy that you know that, that me giving that attention to water it and to plant it and to watch it grow that the energy that i'm giving it to it I'm giving it life. Yeah. Just like the body, Justin. Yes. Yes, yes. It sure is. Yeah. So let's see. Peace, Queen. Hi, Cindy. Oh, thank you for being here. Thank you. I programmed my mind that I was meditating even when I wasn't. Oh, wow. That sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. And it kind of could be like, that could kind of be equivalent to like, uh, living in the now, like living in the now, but at a state of peace and you focus on what you're doing so much. You know, like if I were eating this mango, you know, you just kind of pay attention to what you're doing, the bites, you know, the, you know, how it tastes, how it, how it feels, how sweet it is, you know, how, you know, soft it is to chew, you know. That that could be equivalent to like living in the now, giving all your attention. Because sometimes even when we're eating, we'll be eating, chunk, 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 you know, chewing, chewing, chewing. And we're thinking about, I wonder if I locked the back door. I wonder who that is outside. And I wonder, da, da, da. and we're not into it. So kind of like being in the now is like being into it and letting it be everything. You be in the now when you're having sex, like, you know. We be in the now doing those moments. So be in the now, like when you're working. Be in the now, like when you're eating. And enjoy the moment. Touch it, taste it, feel it. And that's kind of equivalent to what you were saying. Meditative state. It's like being in the now. <laughs> Let's see. That's beautiful. The ability to focus. Oh, yes. You are in the right place. Oh, thank you, Jen. Thanks, True. Hey, damn. Thanks for being here, babe. Yes. So and see. Yeah, euphoria. Yes. Yes. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing back there. And it's a beautiful place. I love the sun. I love the sun. Today, I'm really going to be um, unpacking my office. But normally, I'm outside in the sun. And, you know, it's. It's really, really warm out here, but I'm the type that I could actually stay in the sun all day long. I don't care about the temp. You know, some of the people down here, they talking about, well, up here, <laughs> they talking about, you know, it's, it's really, really hot. But I, I'm like, man, you don't know nothing about that humidity that I come from. It be hot and humid in New Orleans, but I could take this dry heat 
and just sit out in the sun. The sun gives me so much of life, man, so much of energy. We are children of the sun. And so we all have like this percentage of the sun. We're condensed versions of the sun. This is why we are called her sons, percent of sun. We, we are condensed versions of that. And so that that be our life force that be our energy you know that be our pineal gland activator that be you know that be um the thing that could um awaken us you know that be something that can gives us give us our minerals our life force increase our frequency and so i just could sit there and people you know as my family and friends they think that i'm just just crazy sometimes when I do it, but even when we used to go like on trips to like Florida or whatever, I would just sit there on the sand, and if I got a little too hot, I'd just go get up in that water and then come back and sit back and bake underneath the sun. That's just something that I just love to do. It just does something to my soul, and so I'm still not finished unpacking because I've been so busy in my yard sitting in the sun. <laughs> And the other day I was out there and I tried, if y'all was on that particular live, I tried to go live when I was out there and the cell phone got overheated. And I was like, oh, I forgot I'm in the desert. <laughs> the cell phone went dead on my live, but I wasn't hot. The cell phone was. <laughs> oh, you outside now? I love, love, love the sun, Sherry. Yes, I love it too. Yeah, you do. You really, really do. It gives me life, man. I don't care. It gives me life. I could just sit out there all day. That's why yesterday I was showing my little glasses that somebody had bought me from, um, I put them in my cabinet. These little glasses here, somebody had bought me from my Amazon wish list. These going to be my outside in the sunglasses. I like them because they look like a little can of, um, you know, a Coca-Cola can. That's why I put it on my little list. But, um, that's going to be my little glasses that I drink below ice water or my little teas out there. When I'm sitting on the, um, by the Garden of Eden, that's what we're going to call my backyard, the Garden of Eden on the patio. <laughs> so, yeah, I was doing here. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, sprints. I was doing sprints outside yesterday. Okay. Okay, it's cool. My uh, family in New Orleans was telling me how hot it is out there because they have the humidity. It's really hot down there right now, but I'm like, man, it's perfect right here to me. It's perfect. Everything perfect. But anyway, I just wanted to come on and kind of like share my story, my journey. Y'all look out for those um, videos on my YouTube channel. I'm going to post them today. It's like nine videos about my journey and how I manifested it's going to be all the videos, like I said, from the month of August and stuff when I started this year after I cursed Cain Ida. But it's what I did, and he could use some of those tips, uh, inspiration, or encouragement, or whatever you get out of that video to get in alignment with the things that you're wanting and to tweak your manifestation style to maybe better it. Maybe you've surpassed what, what I've been through, you know? But it's still, it's still beautiful to see other people experience this because sometimes people leave nuggets for you. Sometimes it's, well, all the time, really, it be your subconscious mind leading you and in, in, in sending you to listen to a certain person for a purpose. And just find out what that purpose is for you, you know? Because really, I'm just here to inspire you all. This video, was from my heart to yours, baby. Thank you for being you, Miss B. Oh, Frederick, your words still open my mind a little to different. Oh, thank you. I would love to link up with you. I don't know anyone here. Okay, um, I, I think, um, I don't know if we're both friends to send each other messages, but um, I'll see you when I get off here, Jen, Jen X. Miss B and so will definitely check out your videos. Yeah, yeah. Be the light, Justin. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Be blessed, babe.